Hello and yes, welcome to another video with me, Rockboy680. So today, as you can tell, I'm going to be going over the album Gontropo by George Harrison. I uh, mainly wanted to do this video for quite a while because personally this is actually some of George's best work, I think. I think it really gets overlooked because um, with George, you know, you've you got to look at, um, you know, his best albums are All Things Must Pass, Cloud Nine, Living in the Material World and Brainwashed. And a lot of the other George stuff does get overlooked. However, this is one which gets overlooked way too much. This is one of George's, you know, out of his 80s stuff, you know, he only put three albums out of the 80s, but it's easily his second best in my opinion, I think. So, it's it's generally a really good album for George and overlooked so much. So in this review, I'm basically going to uh, do my usual. I'm going to give you a bit of information on the album. Um, I'm going to go over each song individually. I'm going to show you my copy of the vinyl record. And then at the end, I'm going to give you give it a mark out of ten. So anyway, George Harrison's Gone Tropo. This was his tenth solo album, which I think is pretty decent. Um, you know, because I don't think you know when the Beatles split up, I'm not sure what people thought George was going to do. I, I if I was around at the time, I probably would have thought, hey, you know, where's poor George and Ringo going to go? You know, you know. So I'm, I think George doing ten albums in you know this was. 82 in 12 years is a good, that's a good number. Um, released on the 5th of November 1982, it was his last studio album for five years where he, he didn't really retire, he just didn't go into the studio album for quite a while and of course he went in to do Cloud Nine with Jeff Lynne. And um, this album didn't chart, did not chart, I don't think any of the singles charted either. So. It's not too good, really. Um, you would have—I I would have thought it would have charted. I mean, he's a ex beetle but <laughs> there we go. Um, and this album, of course, followed some time in somewhere in England. And somewhere in England is a really good album. Had a couple really good songs on, but I think personally, overall, I do actually prefer this album. I think. Um, so yeah, you know, George was just really loving his time in the studio because uh, George usually spaced his albums out quite well. You know, um, and yeah, he just kind of decided after as soon as he finished, as soon as somewhere in England was out the way and done, that was all done and dusted. It'd been released, and he'd done all the advertising for it. I think he generally thought, let's get back in the studio. You know, I had fun. And I don't know, maybe he didn't enjoy it as much recording this album. That's why he didn't return to the studio for five years, or um, maybe it was because of you know it, the album kind of being a flop. But um, anyway, so um. Let's get onto this track. So there's five tracks on each side, ten tracks in total. So it opens up with "Wake Up My Love," which is easily one of George's best songs. I'd probably put it in my top 25 George songs, probably maybe top 30. It might fall back a little bit because you know George has done a lot of songs, really. But it's one of his better ones, you know. Um, nice opener, very very catchy. Um, I love the piano and the keyboard on the intro. That just kind of pulls me in straight away. It pulls pulls you in straight away, which is what you want an album to do. You want the opening track definitely to be one of the best, because if it's not a great opening track, it, it will it will lose half its audiences. Because um, I, I generally believe I'm going to go to an album, one of my favourite albums, and I don't think the opening track is a good pick. I'm going to go to Goodbye Yellow Brick Road by Elton John. I love the album, and I actually quite like the opening track, which is Funeral for a Friend. However, that album does not set the tone of the album very well, and it doesn't open very well. And I bet half the audience who listened to that album back in the 70s, when it came out, probably turned it off there and then, and then they missed out on one of the greatest albums of all time. So I do believe that the opening track needs to be pretty much perfect, and this one is brilliant. Um, you know, George's vocals again, great. I love how they kind of come in a little bit late. Well, they don't. Well, and they, not really late, but it kind of seems like they do um, at the start. So um, anyway, it's a great song. I love it. And then probably the most popular track on the album, or second most popular, it's definitely in the top two. That's the way it goes. And um, again, another one of George's best. You know, they actually played it at a concert for George. And um, Joe Brown sung it. He done a really good job on the ukulele with it. I love Joe Brown. He's really cool. So seeing Joe Brown singing that a George song on the ukulele was just beautiful. And the fact that he picked a little, it's a little obscure that he, a song from Gontropo got picked 
to be at that concert, you know, it's a little obscure, so it's like, yay, that's my job. Um, <laughs> you know, because, uh, you know, it's always the same George songs that gets played, really. You know, while my guitar Jackie Waves, Here Comes the Sun, um, uh, you know, My Sweet Lord. So, it's nice that um, they picked a bit more of an obscure song for that concert, and it just sounded great. However, the, the version of it on here is even better, because we've got George singing it. And he's just beautiful. I love the guitar work, the lead guitar work that's pretty much down the whole way through it. George doing his kind of classic signature move there with the slide guitar just sounds so good. Um, I love the vocals from George, brilliant, you know. Uh, they also use, on this album, they kind of have a habit of using some really deep kind of vocals like this. <laughs> My very bad impression right there. Anyway, um, they, they have a habit of using vocals like that on this album, you know, they put little twist on it with the, the, I don't know, the auto tune or whatever they use on this album. And, um, you know, you hear it for the first time here. They don't use it much on this song, thank God. <laughs> um, but you do get your first little hear of it and you're like, eh, it kind of, kind of works with this song. So I'll give it to this song. You know, brilliant song. Next track up is a cover. It's I Really Love You. And this, I love how it opens. You get like, I don't know, where, I think it's, in, you know, George Gang at the mic. Dum, 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 dum. Dum, dum. <laughs> and then again, they kind of put the deep twist on it, so dum, 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 dum. <laughs> and it just sounds really funny, really cool. I love it, I think it sounds so cool. Um, the whole song sounds so funny, so cool. I love it. George doing really high vocals. The song is so fun, so different, and not just for George, but the song is just different in general. I don't think I've heard anything like this. It's funny, however, I guess, you know, at the near the end of the song, you know, it's a little old, it's a bit like, okay, hurry up, wrap it up. Um, so I get why people wouldn't like it near the end, it'd probably be like, yeah, hurry it up, come on, shift it along. But for me, you know, I think it's hilarious, it's a funny song. I'm not sure if he wanted us to take it funny, I'm not sure if it's meant to be taken funny, because I can't make sense of the lyrics, if I'm being honest. Um, but it, 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 I take it quite funny, I think it's a really funny song, and I, I like it, it's good. Um, so the last track, oh, no, not quite, um, two more tracks left on side one, we've got Grease now, and um, this is mostly instrumental, definitely the weakest song on side one, I'd say side one is pretty much nearly perfect, but this song here kind of lets side one down a little bit, not saying it's a bad song, because it's more of an instrumental, this song, you don't get much lyrics on it, but when you do, the lyrics are pretty cool. Uh, little dreary lyrics from George, but I just love the, you know, the, the the actual tune of the song, the guitar work that's being performed on it. It's a very, um, it's a song which definitely changes and adapts in certain places, which I like. It's not just a straightforward instrumental, just messing about the guitar, blah, 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 blah. You know, you've got other things going on. The song adapts, it changes. I really like it. It's a good song. Um, and then the last track up is Gone Tropo, and a few people don't like the song, but however, for me, love it. The, the guitar work on it is beautiful. This is probably, Gone Tropo has the best guitar work on, on the album, I'd say. Um, closely followed by That's The Way It Goes, but um, I just love the tune. Dun, 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 You know, you guys have all heard it. It's so good. I love it. And um, I've taken this from my Dark Horse Years box set. The remastered version of it. Wow, did they do a good job on that song. The whole album in general, that's one of the best remastered CDs they've done for George. God Tropo sounds so amazing on the remastered CD, but anyway, I love it. Um, such a great tune. The lyrics don't really make any sense. The lyrics are kind of all over the place, but you know, who cares? Um, however, the vocals are just great. It's a really cool song, I love it. Uh, you know, just lyrics let it down, I guess, but who cares? You can't understand them that well anyway. <laughs> so opening up to side two is Mystical One. And this is basically George singing about how people look at him, you know, because he, you know, he uses the line of people say I'm not what I used to be, you know, it's it's kind of like how he, it's George basically singing at the start. He says this is how people look at me, and this is how I feel because he's saying I'm happier than I've ever been, you know. So the lyrics on this song, this is probably the best lyric song, mystical one, you know. George just saying, you know, I'm I'm really happy at the minute. You know, media, stop putting me down. I don't care if I'm not what I was. I think that's what George is kind of trying to say here. I know I'm not the Beatle that I was, so leave it at that. I'm happy. So lyrically, it's great. Um, it, and in every other way, it's pretty good as well. You know, it, um, 
I love the chorus. The chorus is great. Um, vocals are great. It's another cool song. I like it. Next track up, Unknown Delight. More laid back song. Nice vocals again. Um, you know, from George. Um, lyrics, are, lyrics are good. Um, however, I'm not a fan of the backing vocals because I'm, you know, they kind of, um, I don't know, they just. I guess they fit with the song, but they're a little bit like, mm, no, I'm not sure about that. That's generally how I feel about the backing vocals on here. I'm just not sure of them. I'm not. Sh they kind of fit with the song, but I'm not sure if they do. I, I don't really know how to describe my opinion on the backing vocals here. They're just. I know, I'm not sure if they fit actually. You know, I'm just all over the place on them. Um, anyway, we'll just leave it at that. The backing vocals. I'm not sure if I like them or not yet. <laughs> Um, are probably leaning more towards not liking them because of, I, I don't know if they fit there, you know. Um, anyway, it's a decent song. Uh, Baby Don't Run Away. Uh, use of the deep back backing vocals again here. As soon as it opens, when he does the line, Baby Don't Run Away From Me, it's kind of like, mm, I'd, I'd prefer it without them there, George. Why did you put them there? Anyway, um... They, they kind of ruin it a little bit. They ruin the song a little bit. Because other than that, it's an interesting song. Uh, you know, I, I think the chorus definitely picks it up. The chorus makes it a lot better. And then the female bo backing vocals are really good. So it's like got George singing, these deep backing vocals, which are pretty shit. And then you've got these female, this female, you know, singing in the background. I don't know her name, but she, there's one there. <laughs> and <laughs> sounds good. So it's kind of all over the place again. Um, anyway, it's not bad. Um, next track up, Dream Away. This is probably the most popular, or second, you know, it's up there with That's The Way It Goes. Um, this was featured in the end credits from George's 1981 Handmade Films. Um, what was it called? What was, this, what was the film called? I think it was Tim Bandits or something like that? I don't know. Um, it was one of George's more popular, you know, films. Um, after Monty Python. So um, anyway, um, and it was featured in the end credits scenes, but I think it might have been a bit an instrumental. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, very fun song. Love, love it. George's vocals are brilliant here. Uh, the female, the female vocal performer here, she goes for it here. Best, brilliant vocal performance from her. Fantastic. Um, she, her vocals blend really well with George, and it's kind of upsetting in a way because George didn't use a female backing vocalist many times on any of his other albums, not sure if he even did. This album he actually, he's got one there. He only uses her really well on this song, if, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it's a good song, really catchy, I love it. Oh look, the sun's coming out. <laughs> anyway, last track, Circles. So this is more, definitely more of a dreary number. Um, you know, it sounds like early 70s, George. It really does, early 70s, you know, from the Living in the Material World album. Uh, the lyrics are good, you know, uh, George's vocals are good again, you know, just a little dreary. I'm going to say overall, good song, decent. So anyway, there we go. So the highlights, highlights on the album for me are Wake Up My Love, That's The Way It Goes, I Really Love You, Gone Tropo, Mystical One, and Dream Away. They're my favourite. So as you can tell, I... You know... Two songs on side two, and you know, four of the tracks on side one, so... You know, if you want my opinion, I'm just going to say side one is like... A 9.5 out of 10, maybe a 9, because so, side one is pretty much nearly perfect. So anyway, here's my copy of the runner record. You know... Take out the plate sleeve here because we're going to get loads of glare. I have two copies, but they're both exactly the same, so I'm not going to bother you sh showing you the other one. So here it is. I love the album cover. I love it. I, I don't get why people are so negative on this. Really cool. Um, I'm not sure what this is all about. And they've got the title written there Gone Tropa, and then they've squiggled Tropa out. So it is called Gone Tropa, but if you read the spine. So, Jewel. This just gone? I, I'm not sure why they've squiggled it out, but anyway. Um, really, really cool. Here's the back cover. Very creative, whoever done it. Nice picture of George down there. We have some producers on the album, I believe. 
Um, track listing up the top. And I love kind of um, this bamboo picture frame going around the outside. Love it. Um, here's the sleeve. So loads of information there. You know, if I had the time, I would read it all out to you, but I don't have the time. Can't be bothered. <laughs> Anyway, um, here's all the um, lyrics to the song, so if you want to start singing along, you know. <laughs> it's funny because there are actually um, lyrics in the track Grace, but they've actually just put it down as an instrumental there, which is a little interesting. Um, so yeah, I like all these pictures on here, they're quite fun. Small, middle, big. <laughs> And the record label, of course, of course, is. Oh, I need a bit of dusting. I, this isn't my plain copy. Oh, okay, so I haven't dusted this one. Um, Dark Horse. You know, this record is in great condition. Um, no marks on it, as I say. Oh, there we go. Just needs a little bit of dusting. So I'll leave this one out after the video, and that's what I can do once I've finished making it. How exciting. See how exciting my evenings are? Anyway. I'll uh, just quickly show you this as well. This is what you get in the Dark Horse box set. Um, they have changed the back cover. The, the Dark Horse box set is very strange, if you ask me. They changed the back cover on some of the CDs, and then they just leave them alone on the others. So it's, you know, very strange. I love the CD. I love that. It's really cool. And again, all the Dark Horse CDs come with books, however with Gontropo, they decided to turn it into a poster, there's the actual back cover, so, so, you have that there, all the lyrics, you have the, and then you have the inner sleeve, all printed out, so I mean, They've done a good job with the remaster. Remastering quality, you just go to the song Gone Tropo. You, go to, you just go to the actual song Gone Tropo and you'll hear how well they've remastered this album. Sounds brilliant. Anyway, out of 10, what are we going to give it? I'm going to give it an 8.5. It's an 8.5 for George Harrison's Gone Tropo. Don't forget about my contest, it'd be amazing if um, i got some more entries, because the ones I've had so far have been brilliant, love them all, I'm so grateful. Um, so yeah, there we go, that's his video, 8.5 George Harrison's Good Tropo. Thank you very much for watching, please like the video, subscribe and leave a message. Thank you very much for watching, bye. <laughs>